Hey y'all, Dekumon here, and welcome back to FF14 Heavensward. Last time, who boy last time, a peace conference was planned, but oh, did things go awry before it could even start. And unfortunately, Amelian screwed the pooch again. God dang it. I want to smack Amelian, but thankfully, Thangra did it for me. So, <laughs> at least some problem solved. Now, we only have three story quests left in this patch, but there is still a dungeon left to do, so hence the reason we're actually here back in Gridania, and I'm hobnobbing it in the Conjurer's Guild, because Isumiyan here has our other dungeon quest as we head back into Amdapur. Full glad am I of your presence, Dekumon. The Twelve's Wood has need of your unyielding courage once more. Following your deeds in the lost city of Amdapur, we had thought the darkness lifted, its haunted walls freed from nightmare. Thus did we enter the ruins, the elementals at our side, intent upon returning the decaying edifice to the forest, only for our immortal companions to withdraw without warning. From their agitated whisperings, we later gleaned that an entity of daunting power yet lingers within the bowels of the city. And until this being is put down, the elementals appear loath to return. I pray you, visit Raya Osena where she waits at Camp Tranquil and answer her plea for assistance. <laughs> so Amdapur is in trouble again. Now, if you don't remember, uh, last time we were there, we kicked Diablos out of the ruins. So kind of wonder what's waiting for us there this time. Hmm. You know, if memory serves, this happens to be the exact spot where our white mage trainer would stand if I were a white mage. I think this might actually be her, too. Ah, the intrepid adventurer who braved the darkness of the lost city. To no other would I entrust this task. Lest you wonder, I do not doubt your success in expunging the darkness which took root in the ruins before. The heart of that evil was excised without question. But it would seem that some other power lay dormant beneath the stones all the while, its presence invisible to our senses. Plainly, however, that power is now very much awake. The elementals panic attest to that. Ah, quieting them will be no small task. While my fellows and I endeavor to persuade the elementals to rejoin us, I would have you venture into the city once more, find the source of this new disturbance, and do what must be done. The woodway of the Alphine yet stands guard at the gate. I dare say he has not forgotten you. Ask, and he shall let you pass. Alphine. <laughs> ah, gotta love these random gatekeepers who I just can never remember because there's so many of them. At least I don't have to worry about the random mobs in this area coming after me. When I heard about this new trouble in the Lost City, I thought you might be back. Not one to leave a job half finished, eh? Where you step in there? Ought fit to frighten in elementals not to be taken lightly. Be you favored of the Seed Seers or not. The Lost City of Amdapur, on the hard mode! Now accessible, also by Chocobo. It's alright, can't take you in there anyway. Alright, dungeons, dungeons, where's our dungeon? Here we are. Following the defeat of Diablos, the unnatural pall choking the crumbling city of Amdapur was lifted, and tranquility restored to the Twelfth's Wood, or so it had seemed. When the hearers entered the ruins, however, they had scarce begun consigning the stones to the forest when the elemental allies fled in a sudden panic. By the spirit's agitated whispers did the seed seers learn that a daunting and hostile presence yet lingered within Amdapur's moldering walls. Another level 180, it's the same as Anti-Tower, which also means we will probably blast through everything in this dungeon very easily. Oh wow, yeah, this place has definitely uh, changed a wee bit. A lot more insects this time around. Oh my goodness. Uh, dude, no, you are, you're, uh, this queue is 15 plus minutes long. Like, dang. And that's a tank. That is as a tank, that is insane how long this queue took. Oh, goodness me. All right, so, first off, give them the warning. Turn back on the tank stance, because I was down synced. And we are officially off to the races. Starting off with the nice easy one, a scarab beetle. Eh, might as well fat pull this. A, a lone scarab beetle is not difficult to deal with, and everyone here is very, very over synced, so. Fat pulling this way too easy. Unfortunately, we have wall enemies, which we haven't seen in a while. <sighs> Man, 
you. You guys can beat on the old scarab beetle while I continue to just get everything's attention. Now, unfortunately, that's as far as we can get. I'm kind of disappointed. Oh, well. Oh, that's a lot of AoEs. I almost did not see this because of all the particle effects going off. Thank you. Oh. Ah, gremlins again. Just what I always wanted to see. Gremlins. Make sure I got these guys' attention. I don't know. Five's enough, I think. Our AoE potential is pretty decent. I mean, we have a Dragoon and a Dancer, so... Oh, I got hit with the frickin' debuff. Oh, well. It'll wear off quickly. Thank you. I'm no longer miserable. Butterflies? Hm. Back that off. I am the tank. You will look at me, thank you very much. There we go. Rhino attack. Is that supposed to be a tank buster? Uh, actually, it kind of was. Maybe? Oh. Oh, we have butterfly enemies. We have butterfly enemies now. And a second wall? Yeah, that's a second wall. Oh, and more Wamoras. And more Wamoras! Why are there so many Wamoras? There's just so many evil butterflies here that want to kill me. <laughs> uh, it kind of reminds me of Ravana almost. I don't know why butterflies. Why? Why butterflies? They're normally harmless things. I say this and now we've got a giant ass moth for an enemy. Now moths are just dicks. <laughs> anyway, Akaboth here, not too bad. I think there's only one particular mechanic we really have to watch out for, and it's called Neural Squamata. And I need to remember to turn on No Mercy. Kind of waiting for it before I explain. There it is, Neural Squamata. So what you want to do, get close to a wall and face the wall. Because when Neural Squamata goes off, it will create a little clone of you. And it did that for all of us. And then all of these clones are gonna fire off these big frontal cones. Like, now, oh, you son of a bitch! Ugh, somebody boned them. Boned me. Somebody boned me! <laughs> Who was it? Who did it? Oh, it was the healer. It was the healer that tried to kill me. I was almost assassinated by the healer. Anyway, there's another Neurosquamata. And I think he did it again. Yep, we're going this way. You, you, you got to look away when he casts the Neural Squamata so we don't get wrecked by that. Yeah, I'm kind of just working on autopilot right now. Uh, just going through one, two, three at a time. One, two, three at a time. He's also got Psycho Squamata. It's just a frontal cone. Don't get hit by it. Pretty easy. I think he's also got those little dust clouds to tether to players and chase them around before they explode for a wee bit. And of course, we've got puddles of green spoo on the ground, just to really add to it. And down he goes. Now, item level for this dungeon is 195. Nothing to write home about. Oh yeah, I remember this room from the first time we were here. This was where, uh... This is where the boss was, I think, at the very end of this. And speaking of end, this is as far as I can go. I cannot pull any further. Damn freaking undead dragon. Yeah, he's undead. Miasma breath. That's a, a good sign that he's probably dead. Not to mention all the holes in his leg. And then, yeah, we were, we've got corpses everywhere right here. Uh, Amdapori and Maki corpses, and uh, these guys will actually become a little bit more important later on. Uh, once we finish this uh, 
episode, actually, we're going to be starting a new series of raids, and they will be touching on the Maki storyline. I'm missing one. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm trying to avoid eating the big old circle AoEs. But I will Rampart. Because I can, and because I really want this Void Monk gone. Or I should say Void Squid. I know it's called a Void Monk. But it's a squid. It was a squid. The only way I call that a monk is if it's a Cthulhu monk. Yeah, That's a terrifying thought. Make sure I get both dusty eyes. Thank you. Uh, no. I did not get that stun out fast enough. <laughs> I did not get that stun out fast Oh, look, Joy, there's another Rift Dragon. Yeah, not really a threat, dude. I'll even give you the Fangy Claw, just for the fun of it. I do wish I had Continuation, but I don't get it for a long time. Oh, this is our second boss, isn't it? I think so. Oh, yeah. Uh, Amdapur is sacred. It will not be despoiled. <laughs> I think this... Oh, yeah. This boss is actually one of Amdapur's ancient guardians. <sighs> okay. So, the winged lion here. He likes... Uh, oh, that's the thing. Somebody should be standing in that. Okay. Uh, he has three basic things. The first off is the arcane sphere thing here. Uh, wreck this thing. Wreck it quick. The faster you wreck it, the less damage you take from holy. His other big mechanic is, if memory serves, ancient Libra, which will mark us all as... Yep, there it is. Uh, it'll mark us all as either weak to wind or weak to earth. So yeah, I see how I got a earth resistance down, so I don't want to get hit by earth attacks. So what do I have to do about this? Well, he's going to drop puddles that are either earth or wind element, and they need to be ate by somebody who actually can eat it. By somebody who can eat it. Guys, I need one of the wind users to eat this thing before it explodes. Okay, fine. Oh, and there's another arcane sphere. It's all right, we can take this thing no problem. And the winged lion is already so far close to death that I don't think he's gonna get any more mechanics out. That's an ancient holy, anybody can eat this. But uh, honestly, easy enough for me to do it. <sighs> and yeah, yeah, he only got one thing out. <laughs> That's so sad that he only got one actual mechanic out. Poor guy, did not deserve what we just did to him. Okay, this area definitely was not in the original and poor city. Holy cow, is this place just covered in light element shit. And walking statues. And light sprites. <laughs> not to be confused with light brights, light sprites. <laughs> oh, that's a big cone. That's another big cone. First big cone didn't get to resolve. Second one did, but I was well and truly out of it by then. Now, no banish three. I don't know what that is, but I don't want you to get it. Of course, this place is like, is it crumbling or are the towers just receding? Not sure. Hm. Oh, mana idols. What do you guys do that I have to worry about? Because I remember the ads in this place. They did have some funky little mini mechanics. I don't know. Oh, yeah, no. These guys just have big old circles. That's okay. Big circles are easy to deal with. 
Oof. And there was Banish 3, which basically did nothing. I almost feel bad about wasting a stun on it the first time. Oh, that barely did anything to me. All right. And the last thing is... Oh, Mana Pots. I remember these guys. These guys have a Gaze Attack, if memory serves. And it blinds you if you get hit. So we're going to group everybody together. And then they should all start casting at about roughly the same time. Yeah, there it is. Double Ray. I believe that's it, right? No? Oh, no, there it is. Mysterious Light. That's the... That's the gaze attack. We don't look at that one. Double Ray, I think, was just their mini tank buster. Alright, what the heck is down here that the elementals are so scared of? Hmm. Oh. It's a giant angel statue. Okay. I mean, I guess if you want to be scared of this, then you can be scared of it. Gonna be honest, uh, knowing what we know about Shadowbringers now, this area is far more sinister than it was when we first came here. Uh, oh, no, I was going the wrong way. Of course, everyone else nice enough to wait for me. I mean, they don't have as much of a choice as they do in an 8-man. I are tank. You have to wait for me. Anyway. Say hello to Karibo! Or, oh no, I'm sorry, Karibu. Uh, now you might know this right off the bat, that her life bar is melting. Like, absurdly melting. Uh, oh, she has a regen puddle. We're not letting you stay in a regen puddle. You don't get to heal. Guys, need more people in the circle. Oh, okay. Killing her works, too. Unfortunately, not over yet. See, Karibo here actually has three lives. That's the little buff she has at the end. And even better... Oh, no. Nope. <sighs> Moving out of that, thank you. Uh, every time you kill her, she gets a defense boost. She also has uh, decided to transform all her life abilities into death abilities. That's the first buff she has on her bar. So that Cure 4, the first one she was supposed to do, you're supposed to stand in it in order to keep her from healing too much. Uh, when she transferred it over, it became a death puddle. All right, you're down two lives, girl. You only got one left. And she turned off her life and death thing. Decoy? Oh, she has an ad. Okay, I'll play with that. Yeah, this. The more of us standing in it, the less of a heal she'll get when it resolves. So, she did get a good chunk back there, because there was still two of us not standing in the circle like we should have been. But it won't matter. We are just melting this poor angel. Like, it is embarrassing what we were doing to this poor thing. Oh, she went back into death stance. And another decoy, which you will probably not get to do anything with. Because you're dead. That poor decoy just did not get a chance to do anything. <laughs> this dungeon has become a bit of a joke, unfortunately. But hey, that's what happens with older content. You just out, you just outstrip it. You just plain up outstrip it. <laughs> oh, that was a relatively easy dungeon. You are returned from your expedition to the lost city. That is well. We for our part have at last succeeded in easing the elemental's disquiet. But tell us, Dekumon, what was the nature of the hostile presence that so unsettled them? Uh, believe it or not, it was an angel of light. You know, possessing a statue, but still. Extraordinary. I was all but certain that some seed of the darkness had survived. I could not have been more wrong. I certainly did not expect Ensorcer the statues. 
creations of the Andapori Magi, I believe. It would appear so. They likely began to stir when that fiend was awoken by the weakening seal. Yet that does not explain why the elementals would have cause to fear these ancient sentinels. It seems safe to assume that the Andapori built them to repel the armies of Mak. Were I to hazard a guess, I would say that the passing of the years has dulled the statue senses, and that they mistook our friends for ethereal beings of a different order, void scent of the kind employed by the Miyaki Magi. The Elemental's arrival would have seemed like an invasion. That would explain much, yes. Void sent monstrosities and undying guardians of stone. The War of the Magi must have been a conflict of truly terrifying proportions. It is well that these ancient relics have at last been laid to rest. With the city's defenses thus disabled, we may safely return to our task of cleansing the ruins. You have our deepest gratitude, Dekumon. Don't worry, wasn't that much of a deal, really wasn't. Well, I hate to say it, I know this is going to be a shorter episode than I originally intended, but that's going to be it for today. Uh, I say this because I'm actually sitting in the editing chair, and if I actually go on through the entirety of the footage, well, we're probably going to have an episode that's well over an hour in length, and I don't want to do that. So we'll cut it here, and we will pick this up later. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite, and subscribe to join me for more Aeorzean adventures, and as always, see you in the next video.